Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we're taking a look at an accessory for film photographers, specifically film photographers who might not have a light meter built into their camera. This is the Kex EM1 light meter. It's not communicating with your camera in any way. It's not making any kind of connection where it's sending information to your camera or anything like that. This is simply just a light meter that has a hot shoe attachment on the bottom. So you can just sit this on top of the camera. You don't have to carry around an external light meter or anything like that. So if you have a camera without a light meter, you can just put this on top of the camera and sort of point the camera around as you use the meter itself, basically the same way that you would if you used a meter that was inside the viewfinder of the camera. Now the folks over at Kex messaged me on Instagram a while ago and asked if I was interested in basically just testing this thing out and sharing my thoughts in a video. Now when this was first announced, I had no intention of ever buying one. There are other meters sort of similar to this, little hot shoe meters that are also being made today, but there's also other meters that have been around for a long time that kind of have this same principle, but something like this, as nice and sleek as it is, especially for the price, um, it is an interesting option. It's just not for me because my main camera that I use every day is an M6 and that camera already has a meter built in. Now, if I were using an older camera like the M3, M2, M4, or really any other film camera, it doesn't have to be a 35 millimeter. It doesn't have to be a Leica. It can be any camera. If it doesn't have a light meter, but it has a way to attach attach this to the camera via a hot shoe or a cold shoe, uh, this could be a good option for a lot of people. So I figured I would test it out, see how reliable it is, especially compared to the M6 meter, and uh, basically let you guys know whether or not it could be a good option. Because if this can compete with the M6 meter, both in reliability and accuracy, then this could be a pretty solid option. So before we start doing some side-by-side -side tests, let's take a look at what comes in the box when you purchase one of these. Inside the box, you've got the meter itself, some extra hot shoe mounting plates, an Allen wrench to mount and adjust those plates, more on that in a second, a USB-C cable since there's a rechargeable battery inside the meter, and some instructions for operation right inside the lid of the box. Now feel free to take a second, pause the video, and look over all of this info here. What you see here is what I know, so if you have a question that isn't answered on this sheet right here, then I also have that same question. It's a pretty simple little meter to operate uh, with just a few variables to adjust. There really isn't too much that you have to interact with and change on the fly. And uh, you just have some simple up and down buttons for your aperture and your shutter speed. So uh, with the design and the instructions included, it's pretty straightforward. Now on those mounting plates, you can move the plate around a bit to best suit your camera. So every camera is a little different. So maybe it would be best right in the middle, maybe on the side. It just depends on the camera. So for me, I have mine mounted all the way to the side so that when it's sitting on my M6, my shutter speed isn't covered up or blocked at all. It also looks really clean on the M6 with the matching silver, although there is a black option as well. Okay, enough of all of that. Let's actually test this thing out and see just how reliable and accurate it is. light is pretty flat so really everything in this whole scene is kind of by you know half a stop over or under no matter where I place it and that's given me f4 at one one thousandth of a second so I guess we'll hit this test and just see if I go to f4 spot on it's the exact same as the m6 meter so we're going to go ahead and run that Five hundred and two eight at one four hundredth of a second. So barely different. I'm gonna go ahead and go to two fiftieth of a second at two eight. That's the thing. Like no matter how different these are, if they're pretty close, film is gonna have pretty good latitude so if you're a stop off 
whether it be over or under, that shouldn't really make that much of a difference, so. But I mean, that wasn't even a full stop difference. Two eight at five hundred red right here. Two eight at four hundred. The times that it's been off have been just barely off, so it's a good sign for someone who doesn't have an internal light meter already. I mean, if it's that close to the M6 meter that I've never had issues with, then that should be solid. Yeah, I know that wasn't a very dramatic or exciting test because it wasn't really thrown off by anything. It was pretty much spot on the entire time. But that's a good thing. It does show that the meter is reliable and accurate. So I went off of just this meter alone and my plan was to just shoot whatever exposure it gave me rather than what the M6 was giving me just to see, you know, if it's off by a stop or two, how much difference does that really make in the end result? But it was really accurate the entire time. If it wasn't exactly the same as the M6 meter, it was by less than a stop of light and with you know film's latitude you really don't have to worry about that for someone who wants a light meter on their camera but they don't have one built in already and maybe they don't want to carry around an external light meter that they actually have to keep in their pocket or on a lanyard or something if you want something to just throw on top of the camera like this this could be a pretty good option for you of course you can always use something like the sunny 16 rule if you don't want to buy a meter and your camera doesn't have one and i think every photographer even if you have a meter it's good to practice that sort of thing the whole sunny 16 rule is just good practice for every photographer to have and it's good practice for your eyes but not everybody wants to do that some people just want to have something on their camera that's reliable it can give them their exposure and they don't really have to worry about that kind of thing so if you're in that boat uh, this could be a solid option for you big shout out to kex for sending this out to me i had fun testing it out and now i can comfortably recommend it to people if they're looking for that kind of thing so if you're interested in more information on the kex and want to pick one up yourself i'll put a link down below uh, and also so I'm going to take a second to pay some bills, tell you about our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is by far the best all-in-one platform to building a great looking website with tons of different features and options for you to have. No matter what your skill level is with building websites, anyone can do this with Squarespace because of their drag and drop templates and it's fully customizable. So no matter what template you choose, even if you have the same template as someone else, you can always customize it and still make it your own. They have tons of different features built right in, whether it be for an online store, an email newsletter, anything that you might possibly need. Everything is right there in Squarespace. You don't have to go to a bunch of different third-party services. It's all built right in and extremely easy to use. Obviously, if you're in the market to build your own website, Squarespace is the best place to go. So you can do a free trial at squarespace.com. But when you're ready to get signed up, go to squarespace.com slash mattday, and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed uh, all of the videos recently, although they've been a bit different and I've been a bit different going through a lot with everything. And if you've been watching the channel, you know what I've been going through. Um, things are going very well right now though. So uh, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll share more on that uh, when the time comes. But I uh, just wanna say real quick before I you know, end the video, I really do appreciate all of you who have reached out and have been supportive, um, especially right now as I've been going through uh, what is definitely the most sort of transformative season of my life ever and uh, one of the most just emotionally taxing uh, seasons of my life. So uh, sitting down in front of the camera is not always the most enticing thing. Most days I really don't want to do it. So I appreciate those of you who have stuck with me and are still watching the videos, still engaging with me. Uh, it really does mean a lot. So thank you. I just want to say thank you to all of you who have been so kind. Um, yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming. Thank you all for sticking with me. I love you all very, very much. I'll see you guys next time should also mention as we're walking that if I'm walking funny it's because I fell while taking down curtain rods landing on my kids bookshelf breaking through it with my ribs and my hip landing on a pocket full of screws which I'll throw up a photo here 
So I'm doing very well. <laughs>